Stadium in Mesa. Welcome to MCTV's presentation of junior college football as the Mesa Thunderbirds host the Gila Monsters of Eastern Arizona. Hi, everybody. I'm Eric Anderson along with Hall of Fame coach Joe Kirsting. And, well, Joe, tonight the weather's supposed to cool off a little bit, but ideal here in the Valley of Sun. Temperatures in the high 60s. A couple of teams on the opposite end of the spectrum here as far as winds goes. Mesa 1-8 and eight overall. Eastern 20th in the nation, 7-3. and three. They've had, had a couple of bites as far as bowls go, so Eastern really needs to win this game tonight. But if you were coaching Mesa, Denver Lattimore is the coach. How do you motivate a 1-8 and eight team so they just don't mail it in? Well, it's tough. Uh, they've been on a negative side of the scale, like you say, most of the season. But uh, these guys are college athletes, and they're competitors. They came here to compete. They came here to improve as, as athletes, to get an opportunity to go on and play the next level. So I'm sure they'll be ready to play. And you've seen Mesa quite a few times this year doing the radio for them. A couple of big athletes on offense, particularly Maurice Trotter, number two, a big wide receiver, six foot two, six foot three, can really go up, make the big plays, and that's a concern for Eastern. Well, Trotter is a big play player, and uh, if Eastern's going to play him tight in the secondary, look for a little play action on the part of Mesa and, and go deep with Trotter. But, you know, the key f for Mesa to me is, is to try to remain balanced. Uh, a couple weeks ago against Scottsdale, they were able to run the ball pretty well and mix in the play action pass, and they scored quite a few points against a pretty good Scottsdale defense. And Eastern coming up from Thatcher, the Thatcher-Safford area down in the eastern part of the state, they do nothing but run the ball. They only threw three times last week against Pima. The offensive line average is 325 pounds and how does Mesa stop that run 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 well Eric they throw the ball they just throw it backwards <laughs> as part of the triple option uh, and that's the whole key to their game they want they want to make you defend all three aspects of the option the dive to the fullback the quarterback on the keep and the pitch to their speedy uh, tailbacks around the corner so Mesa's got to play very disciplined defense uh, take away all three aspects and really rally to the football to stop that running game well it's Mason Eastern coming up right after this is the kickoff got the big play players that can keep them in this football game they can hold them off defensively so Brandon Porter kicks it off for Eastern Arizona coming down at Saul at the 13 yard line Saul up over the near side over the 20 over the 25 up over the 30 and taken down here at the 32 yard line coming up and making a big hit on defense Caleb Elliott it'll be first down and 10 good field position for Mesa from their own 32 yard line Saul, a big playmaker on offense and returns for Mesa. 16-yard return for Cody Saul, who will be doubling as the kicker tonight as Troy Hudson is out for Mesa with a concussion two weeks ago up at Scottsdale. That could be a big factor in the game. Hudson's really done a nice job in both the punting and kicking game for Mesa, and without him tonight, it could be challenging in their kicking game. Gavin Mack gets a start for Mesa, first down and 10. Handoff inside with a penalty marker comes in. That may be, well, it could go on either side, but we'll do it all over. Well, Mesa went on a quick count, and uh, they may not have been set, or Eastern might have been in the neutral zone. I'm not really sure. So we'll sort it out. Offside on the defense, number 52. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, offsides against Tana Woodward, the big linebacker for... Eastern. Eastern's not going to be able to just show up and cash this one in. Mesa's not going to roll over and play dead. It'll be first down and five. Mesa from their own 37-yard line. Gavin Mack, the left-hander from Mesa, gets the start. 69 for 156, 922 yards on the season. Backs in the I formation. They pitch it. This is Lance trying to get to the outside, but he has stood up after a one-yard pickup out at the 38-yard line coming up is Hales from his linebacker position making the stop and Joey mentioned that the starting three running backs not in there for Mesa tonight. Yeah, Lance is a natural wide receiver who they've moved to running back. Obviously, he has very good speed, was able to get to the edge of the defense, and uh, they can get him outside every once in a while. They should be able to get some decent gains. So that'll be second down and a long three for Mesa from their own 39-yard line. Gavin Mack, the brother of Tyler Mack over at Scottsdale, looks to go to the air, throws deep down the right side. Had a man trying to get it to Saul, and Mack gets knocked down in the backfield and could have an injury. Well, that was excellent one-on-one -on -one coverage by Abdullah Kane at the left corner spot. He was stride for stride with uh, Cody Saul. So Gavin Mack went down that tough defensive line of Easter, knocked him down with no penalty marker on the play, and Mesa's faced with a third down and three, just shy of their own 39-yard line, under 14 minutes remaining here in the opening quarter. 
No score and Mesa needs to get to their own 42 for a first down. Three receivers set as Mack goes out of the shotgun lineup to his left is Lance. Showing blitz movement on that left side of the line. It almost looked like Mesa jump, but Joe, what'd you see on that? Well, Eastern definitely moved, but did they move into the neutral zone before the Mesa player moved? That's gonna be the big question. And that's what the officials are talking about right now. All start on the offense, number 64. Five yard penalty, still third down. See, it's okay if the defender moves as long as he doesn't move into the neutral zone uh, before the snap of the ball. And since he was not in the neutral zone when the Mesa player moved, it's gonna be illegal procedure on, on Mesa. So that's third and eight where we had third and two. Yeah, Beard, the left guard jumped a little bit quick and a five yard penalty be third down and eight for Mesa from their own 33 again, needing to get out to their own 42. Three receivers set, Mack to go to the air, has pressure, dumps it off over the middle, into traffic, it's caught by Shorter, all the way down the 35 yard line, tackled by Beard after a huge game, the tight end Shorter with a nice catch. That was a great throw by Mack. Uh, Eastern came up in an all out blitz, they, they brought the linebackers up right up in the A gaps between the center and guard. Uh, the full back, or the single back was able to get a slight pickup on the blitzing linebacker and Mack threw it off that back foot and a perfect throw to Shorter down the middle of the field. A 30-yard pickup to Lawrence Shorter, the tight end, a freshman, 6'5", 225 pounds out of Queen Creek. Mesa first down and 10 from the 36-yard line of Eastern. The handoff to Lance going right, cuts it to the outside, stood up and taken down at the 34-yard line. That was Winton Stewart, the linebacker from Georgia, the leading tackler for Mesa on the stop. Well, Mesa got a little bit of crack there where they were doing the zone scheme to the right, and Lance read it pretty well, stuck it up in there, got a, got a couple yards, and if they can just keep Eastern honest with the running game, just keep them honest. Don't have to get a lot of big plays, but just keep them honest and, and get two, three, five-yard gains every once in a while in the running game. That'll help them with that passing game that they have. Darius Jones, number 36, checks in as Lance checks out for Mesa. Be second down and eight for the T-Birds at the 34-yard line of Eastern. Four receivers and a little quarterback keeper to the right side by Gavin Mack. Picks up three close to the 30-yard line. Getting dropped over on that far side that time by Jones. That's the kind of play we're going to see from that team in the white all night long. That was a little option to the right-hand side. Mack decided to keep the ball. I think when he pitched it, he had a really big game because there was nobody available to pick up the pitch man. 12 minutes remaining in the first quarter, no score. Third down and four for Mesa at the 30-yard line of Eastern. They need to get down to the 26-yard line. This drive started back at the 32-yard line. A big third down conversion for Mesa kept this one alive. You know, Eric, this is four down territory. With their kicking game the way it is, I'm sure they'll go for it on fourth down if they don't make it here. Back out of the shotgun, three receivers. Fires deep down the near side, has Saul wide open, complete for a first down and more inside the 10 to the eight yard line. Cody Saul was wide open and gets the first down and more for Mesa. Well, Eastern Arizona is coming up and playing that tight press man coverage. We talked about this before the game. If they're going to play them tight, there's a great chance these Mesa receivers are going to get behind them. So if there's enough protection for Mack, he can deliver the rock, and that was a perfectly thrown ball on the wheel route to Cody Saul. A 22-yard pickup, and Cody Saul, who's going to double his kicker tonight, wide open, a freshman with good size, 6'3", 205 out of Mesa. So Mesa coming out with a flurry here. It's first down and goal at the Eastern eight yard line. Back out of the shotgun. Lance lines up to his right and Clore to his left. Back to throw his Mack going towards the end zone. Overshot the intended target. It was Trotter in the back of the end zone. We had a little contact in the end zone, but they must have felt like the ball was uncatchable or was in incidental contact. Maybe the legs got tied up because both defender and receiver fell to the ground. How about Gavin Mack out there, the quarterback of Mesa out of Mountain View? Left-hander, freshman, 6'1", 190 pounds. He's had a good presence out there tonight, and I certainly like what I've seen. Uh, he's a good football player. Uh, unfortunately, early in the season, he took a lot of big hits and, and wasn't able to complete many games, but... Uh, they protected him much better the last two games. Quick count as they hand off going inside. It's Lance hit and drop for a one yard loss at the nine yard line. Coming up, making a big stick on defense was Candon Thomas. 
What did you see there, Coach? Well, I saw not a lot of blocking and a lot of white shirts around the football. Uh, they were running a little misdirection dive play, but uh, Eastern obviously did not go for the misdirection. South third down and goal from Ace at the nine-yard line of Eastern. We mentioned the kicking game. Troy Hudson, the normal kicker from Ace, is out, so could be four down territory. From the shotgun, passing situation for Mack, drops back to throw, has pressure, fires to the end zone, in and out of the hands of Saul, and he had a touchdown. So very unfortunate right there as Saul had it in his hands but just couldn't hold on. Extremely well executed play. The offensive line gave Mack great protection. The running backs picked up the blitzers and uh, threw the ball on time. A great route. Got to finish the play. Did not finish. So a 10-17 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Four down territory for Mesa's. They're missing their kicker, Troy Hudson. It'll be fourth down and goal at the Eastern Nine. Hebert spread the field with three receivers. Lance lines up to the right of Mack, who goes out of the shotgun. Left-hander has the pressure coming in. Chase to his right and gets it away. He is hit and dropped by Hales. And also coming in, Winton Stewart brought the pressure. Mack got it away, but Coach looks like it's going to be over on downs. 